volume nice and loud. Because we are controlling transmissions with dance beats and r You're in the mix with Lil Drummer Girl. With your host, Dawn Marie. In the mix. In the mix. Welcome, my drumsters, back to another episode of The Little Drummer Girl. I'm your host, Dawn Marie Mutel, and I'm here today to cover something that I find is really important, and that is, are you playing your A-game? You're probably saying, what do you mean am I playing my A-game? Well, I'm going to tell you what I mean by you playing your A-game. Seriously speaking, bringing your best to the table, knowing that you're showing up every day doing the things that you know that you need to do to succeed. Going the extra mile for something that you know, eh, you could sit back and not have to do that little extra thing, but playing your A game, you're going to want to do that little extra thing and go the extra mile for that person or for that thing because you know it's going to make all the difference. So do you think you're playing your A game or do you know that you're just like slacking a little bit because you know like, oh yeah, I should be doing some other things here that I'm not doing? Well, if that's the case, I really want you to get your mindset on really diving deeper so that you can start to play your A-game every day. And that includes your weekends, that includes your evenings, it includes everything that you do from day to day. Now, some of you listening out there may want to be in the music business, or you may be a dancer in theater, or you might, you know, be a songwriter, or an artist, or an entrepreneur. Any way you slice it, we all have to bring our A-games to the table. I remember when I was younger, I was just like, I don't really care so much. It kind of like, eh, it didn't matter. You know, if I saw something on the ground, I didn't pick it up or what have you. But now, you know, if I'm walking through an office building and I see something on the floor, I pick it up. If I see that somebody, you know, left something somewhere, I return it to the lost and found. It's those little things that I find that call to bring your A game, right? Because it's going that extra mile, doing that extra step that you normally might not do. A lot of people feel like, well, it's not my business, it's not my job, it's not my this, fill in the blank. And that's not playing your A game. That's playing the the blame game, if you ask me. Oh, well, you know, she did this to me and he did that to me and God forbid, you know, that's why my life is in shambles. Well, no, what if you took responsibility for yourself, right? And said, I put myself in that situation. Like, for instance, I was in that 10-year relationship. I could have gotten out when it was bad, but I didn't. I stayed. And why did I stay? Because I kept thinking it was going to change. It was going to get better. No, it didn't get better. It just got worse. And the longer I stayed, the worse it made my life. And I knew I had to get out, but I didn't. And I don't want those things to happen to you. I want you to realize that something may be going on that isn't right necessarily, and you have to change it. And if you don't change it like right now then you're going to get caught in that trap and you won't get out. Maybe you're in a bad relationship or maybe you're in a bad job and you're so unhappy, but are you taking the necessary steps so that you can get out of that job and find a job that you actually love? Maybe you have to take a cut and pay, but you know what? Every day that you go to that job, you're going to be thrilled when you're doing it and you're going to love it and time's going to fly and you can't get enough of it. Maybe you have to become an intern to learn some skills that you need for your business. I mean, I remember when I worked at MCA Music, they had a lot of interns that would come in because they wanted to learn the business and it was a great way for them to learn it. If you want to do something so badly, you'll do it for free. I mean, when I first started doing my makeup artistry business, I was doing makeup for free on a lot of people just to get the experience because I was only putting makeup on myself for years except for a couple of friends that say, hey, can you help me out here? Other than that, I wasn't applying makeup on all different face shapes and eye shapes and things like that. And that's really crucial to being a good makeup artist is that you have to learn how to work. Uh, Let's say, you know, it's an Asian eye. It's a different eyelid than someone else's eye, you know, or working with African-Americans. They have sometimes you have to use three or four different foundations because of the skin. There's, you know, maybe lighter here, darker there. So you have to kind of work with that. And the only way you're going to learn it is by doing it for free, right? Because, you know, unless... You go to school, but you still want to deal with it in the real world. But I did a lot of stuff for free before I got paid. When I wanted to do special event planning, I didn't have a job doing special event planning. I didn't know how to do special event planning. But I was working as a volunteer with the Special Olympics in the early 90s. And it was my way of giving back and helping out. And then all of a sudden, one day they came up to me and said, Hey, Dawn Marie, would you like to be on our special event planning committee? And I just thought, yes. 
You know, I don't want to say no to any kind of opportunities that come my way that's going to help me. And sure enough, by working on this event with them, I learned such a large amount of information that helped me continually do that job in that space, which was event planning, special events. Because every time I went to another agency for some other job, they saw on my resume that I had that experience for a good company, but I did that for free. I gave up my Saturday nights, my Thursday nights, my Tuesday nights to go work with them and help them out. So what are you willing to do to bring your A-game to the table? Are you willing to do stuff for free just for a certain amount of time until you can start getting paid to do it? Or can you find little things that you can do every day that's going to make you step up to the plate a little bit more? It's little stuff, right? They always say everything's about the little things in life. Think about it. Let's say you were going to go to the beach. Okay, you're going to spend the day at the beach and you get to the parking lot and you get out and you see that somebody left their their sand chairs there. Are you just going to look at it and say, oh, okay, somebody left their chairs and, you know, go onto the beach and forget you ever saw them? Or would you try to find someone that runs that beach area to say, hey, you know, can you take this to the lost and found or where the lost and found is? Because I'm sure these people are going to come back because, you know, beach chairs are not cheap anymore. I found one the other day that I wanted to buy, but it was fifty four dollars. I said, the heck with that. I can't buy a beach chair for $54 right now. So I didn't buy it. And that was out of CVS. I found a wallet in the street and I didn't know what to do with it. You know, it's like, I never found a wallet before it's in the street. So what do I do? Somebody said, you put it in the mailbox and then they will send it to the person. So I did that. But I tried looking him up online to see if I could, you know, get a contact number. I was unsuccessful with that. So I had to do it that way. So I put it in an envelope and, and said, please return to sender. And that was that. So that's what I'm saying. When you bring in your A game, you know, it's getting the work done that you need to do. Do you know that, let's say you have, you have to deal with your expenses and you don't know anything about accounting work, right? Now you have to sit there and learn about accounting. If you leave your money in the hands of someone else, don't do that because it could easily get misused. I remember one time I had to find a penny. I was working for a commercial real estate developer's office and I was their full charge bookkeeper and I was like 20 years old. And I told them in the beginning, I don't know about accounting. They said, oh, we'll send you to school and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And one day I was doing the bookkeeping and we were short a penny. And I told my boss and I said, hey, Danny, we're missing a penny. And he was like, well, you know, it's got to bounce to the penny. And I'm thinking, what's the big whoop? But it was a big whoop because it has to balance to the penny. And that's how accounting is, right? So what happened? I had to go back seven years of bank statements to find the penny. And I found the penny. It wasn't my fault. It was the banks. They transposed a number, but I found it. And let me tell you, that was a very huge eye-opening experience for me because I realized like there was an accountant that came in quarterly to handle those books and he probably found it who knows how long ago and just ignored it. And that was it. And so I'm thinking, you know, never leave your money in the hands of someone else. You know, you may want to have people working for you, but you need to be on top of your game and you need to know where every penny is allocated, where it's being spent, how it's being spent so that you don't get screwed in the end. How many times have you heard of a famous singer that owes millions of dollars in taxes and they're going to go to jail because somebody screwed them over that was handling their finances, that they lied to them and told them a different story than what was true. But if that person was on their A game, they would have known exactly what they had in the bank and how much money that was going out every month and they would know their budgets and what have you. I was at a conference the other day with Oprah, and she said that she signs all her checks. She does all the transfers. She doesn't leave it to anyone else to do the work. So that's why staying on top of your A-game is so important in all aspects of your life, and not just in business, but in your personal life as well. I like to write everything down like the steps, because I have to see it on paper to know, okay, I have to do all of these things. But then there's the, as I call the subcategories for each of those things, right? Because not everything is black and white. There's one thing on there that could be just, oh, 
just make that one phone call. It could be, oh, call that person and then you have to go and do some more research online because now you need to find this thing or that person or whatever it might be. And it could be a maze. Like this book for me that I'm working on has been a maze. I've never written a book before. I've been in, published in books with stories before, but I never wrote a whole book from beginning to end by myself with no help, no publisher, no editors. I'm doing everything myself. And that's why it became a, uh, an audio book, I think, because I already had the experience with the editing from my podcast. So I thought, why not do it in audio format? And then I can work on the print version after I get the audio version out. But there's so much involved, like, you know, getting an ISBN number and making sure that I have the copyright matter done. And if I do this and I have to do that, and, you know, there's a lot of different working parts that I had to learn about. And again, it's a maze. So I'm here in this one side of the spectrum, and then I had to get to the other side of the spectrum. And there's all that matter in the middle that I had to straighten out. And if I didn't write it down step by step to see what do I have to do to get there, I would just be swimming aimlessly and not knowing where I'm going, right? Because it'd just be like, it's it's trying to hit that bullseye in the middle to say, that's where I want to go. And then you have those outer rings that say, okay, well, you need to do this and you need to do that and you have to do this and you have to do that. But now I could take the shortcut, right, and say, you know what, I'm just going to send it out to somebody, spend a chunk of money, let them do it. But I wanted that experience to do it myself for my future books because I have two other books that I already know what I want to write about. As soon as this book is done, I'm going to be moving on to those. And I want to do it myself and I want to save myself the money by not hiring somebody else to do it right now because I don't have the budget to do it. Maybe if this book makes me some money, then I can hire those people to do it for me for the next books, which I would hope for. You know, having your own business, you have to wear a lot of hats and juggle a lot of things. And in your personal life, when you love someone, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you're not just going to be like, ah, yeah, I love them, but you know, well, whatever. I'm not going to do any work for them because you know what? I don't got the time. Well, then you're not going to have a long lasting, healthy relationship because it's just going to fall apart. But if you go those little extra miles and do those little extra things, to make them happy and say, hey, I was thinking of you, so I, I know you love this little thing so much, so it doesn't have to be expensive items. It could be, you know, you love, you know, they love Reese's peanut butter cups, so you went out to the store and you got them a little bag of them or something. And I'm not talking about some serious coin here. I'm talking about little tiny things. Even if you go in your backyard and you pick a flower off of a bush and you bring it home to her and you say, here, honey, I know you love gardenias and I just saw this beautiful gardenia tree. Just taking something that's going to brighten their day. Because think about it, I'm sure they do things for you that brighten your day, right? And so just going that little extra mile can make a world of difference. All right, my drumsters, that's all I'm going to leave you with for today. If you haven't already ordered your copy of the 151 Musically Inspired Secrets to Master This Thing Called Life, please go to www.littledrummergirl.com, that's L-I-L, drummergirl.com forward slash book and order your copy today. I'm telling you, it's going to help you in so many different areas of your life. And I'm not just telling you this to blow smoke up your you know what. I'm saying this. These are the things that I've had to deal with in my lifetime that have helped me after being hit by three cars, falling into a sinkhole, being financially broke. I've had all the shit happen to me, okay? So I've learned a few things over time because I've been studying all of this psychology, communication, self-help for over 35 years now. And all of these things that I've studied have helped me out so much to keep my life and my spirits high so that when I got knocked down, I could get back up and fight again. And I can't begin to tell you how many times that's happened to me. You would be shocked and amazed. (laughs) But I'm not getting into that today because that is a whole nother book. All right, guys, remember, it's never too late to live the life of your dreams and leave a trailblazing behind you. So rock on and rock out and I'll catch you on the flip side.